All right, guys, my name's uh, Dustin Tiander. I run our enterprise research team here at Masari. And um, what we're gonna be talking about today is AI and crypto. And I wanna take a step back for a second and talk about kind of the meta, if you will, not just, okay, how do we put AI on the blockchain? So just to start off first, how does it sort of re-architect the web in general? So the web one, we sort of traditionally think about is publisher dominated, okay? This is, what they did is they controlled uh, distribution. That was like the key ingredient. Then the internet came around and platforms made distribution effectively free, right? Zero marginal cost to publish a new blog, et cetera. But how those platforms are now competing is they're closing down data, okay? They have lockdown databases, API access, and that's how they're competing, that's where their moats are, and that's how they're charging money. Like take the Twitter API, for example, that's been locked down over the last couple months. Uh, so how do you build, call it an autonomous agent on top of Twitter, right? How do you build a, a cool new front end? Like if I want to have like a Hello Kitty sort of themed Twitter, how do I do that uh, when I can only read 100 tweets or so through the API? That's not fundamentally how it works. So the LLMs, AI, et cetera, naturally is going to cater towards an open internet, okay? And you can't just do open internet with open access to data. That's where the cryptography angle comes in, okay? That's how you do open systems at scale. So that's how you get state. Ethereum, okay? How do you store documents, Filecoin, etc.? You're gonna need an identity layer in there, right? Lens, some of these other open social networks, and of course, the AI platforms. We need to train models at scale um, in an open way with open data, privacy, etc. So what this really does is it moves sort of the marginal value that we create on the internet outside of an economy's scale-driven uh, world into what I'm calling like kind of coordination at scale. In an economies of scale world, you're limited sort of by this coordination threshold, okay? This is like how large can you make your organization and actually spread information around. Like you've seen sort of stats around how much GDP is effectively is knowledge work, okay? Knowledge work is basically just a bunch of people with email, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, communicating uh, the status of a power plant or whatever in China to the business head in America, okay? This is effectively a, a supply chain how do you do this at scale in an open way? This is where blockchain and AI come in. AI, you can think of it kind of like the steam engine um, for logistics. Instead of just pumping coal, wood, whatever it is, we're now pumping knowledge work and it's gonna increase in a rapid, rapid scale. And it, obviously to do this at scale, you need the crypto angle to kind of coordinate people's incentive alignment and everything uh, that you need to do. So right now we're sort of at the very, very early, early stages of this, of course. Uh, we've built out some crypto infrastructure. We're starting to bring sort of the AI infrastructure on chain. Um, and there's effectively like two factions, which I think through this. Uh, there's guy on the infrastructure side and then on the consumer side. So on the infrastructure side, how do you train, fine tune, even call the LMs, host the data, et cetera. This is a huge unsolved problem right now. Open AI effectively just dominates all of this. And, um, is the central engine that is doing the tuning, fine tuning. God damn. Um, so what we've got is a system where we've got, um, we're gonna need to do this in an open way, right? Because open AI has again got the API layer around it. We need to have models that can be trained done in an open system. And we've kind of already seen open models win. We've kind of seen Falcon and some of these other ones come out. Um, but you need to do this in a way that's scalable and incentivized. Right now it's just people almost by the good of their hearts uh, doing these things. Uh, so that's projects like Jensen and some of these other deep ends where we're kind of incentivized to hardware collection, run these things, and that's both on the model tuning and fine tuning. That's a hugely capital intensive process. That's where crypto really excels. It's basically in capital formation across the world and as well as in hardware formation. That's sort of also on the, the inference side. So inference is effectively just when I call the API for the LLM, return a, uh, a response, okay, that's, that's, that's inference. So there's projects like Giza where you can upload uh, kind of a, a model and, and then network runs the model, if you will. Uh, and there's some, obviously some other players in this space as well. As well as you're gonna need like data networks. So data networks is both open data, like all right, how do I incentivize the collection of a bunch of driving data, right? Um, is, and you need to do this in a private way, scalable way, all sorts of things like this, as well as where to store the data. We touched on Filecoin, Arweave, stuff like this uh, in the past. And as well, lastly, ZKML. So the big question out of all this is great. I got smart contracts running on Ethereum, whatever it is. How do I get AI to talk to that in a way that's not where I've just got something completely centralized over here? 
Um, ZK AML is a way that you can do off-chain compute and just effectively send the results or at least prove that I ran this program on-chain. So what this allows you to do is effectively bring the LLMs on-chain and do higher levels of computation. Right now, if you think about what smart contracts are really doing, it's super, super simple. It's send money to Joe from Bob and swap and do take out a loan, okay? These are very simple, simplistic transactions, but how do you build that next level of consumer application? Uh, you're going to need to bring the LLMs on-chain to do, whether it's post uh, something on Lens or on the social network, whether it's do make a decision, okay? There's a umpteen million ways in which you can start to bring decision-making skills on-chain in a way that we haven't seen before, right? You need to expand the scope of what you think applications on-chain can look like, and the ZKML is fundamentally going to re-architect almost how we do on-chain applications, okay? Now, next up is kind of on the consumer basket. So that was very much how do we train, host, and run these models. Next up is how do we make products with it, okay? And not just a simple sort of gimmicky product, but like truly take care uh, or take into account crypto values. Um, so this is like ownable digital objects is what I call it. It's not the sexiest name in the world, but think about if you can own your own agent with its own personality and it's sort of customized. You're gonna pay a premium whether uh, to get something like that, okay? Uh, so that's the kind of in the virtual beings. Like imagine you've got a lens handle, social media handle, and you've got an autonomous agent which you just bought on, behind that, and you're gonna run a, a content strategy. And it's going off effectively posting by itself, posting pictures, doing whatever, and effectively can earn money for you, okay? This is like, you can imagine where you've now got a suite of these that are going out and running various different content strategies within social media, and it doesn't have to be like a social media strategy. We talked about the knowledge work before. Why not just have it sort of do that um, knowledge supply chain, if you will. So you now can ownable sort of digital agents, if you will, uh, that you can trade in and around. This is kind of NFT economy. We really need to break that model in our heads of NFTs or profile pictures. They're not, okay? They're real digital objects that can run and do things, do complex calculations. And we're gonna start to see this in the future. And this kind of comes back to why you need these open systems. It needs to read the data. It needs to be able to post. It can't have these limitations of the platform model that we have right now. That platform model is so driven off of ads uh, that they can't release their API. They can't just say, like, you say, okay, Twitter can open their API. They can't. Because if that, a if that agent read that API, it can say, okay, ad, gone, buy. I don't want that in my timeline. Well, that's how they make money, right? So they're never gonna do that. So this is why these open systems are gonna come into place. And as well, you got in the kind of co-curation, okay? So this is, how do you do IP at scale? This is kind of that coordination principle. Um, so these IP marketplaces. So you imagine if you owned a pudgy penguin or whatever it is, that's a piece of IP. That's got a brand behind it. It can go into a storybook and whatever, but there's multiple people who's writing the story, who's doing the marketing, who's doing the distribution, all these kind of things. How do you bring multiple different people that are contributing to the content creation or experience creation process uh, and get them all aligned? We're starting to see this bubble up now. It's, Co-creation, it goes by various different names, um, but this is a hot area as well. We're gonna to start to see this expand up, especially with the, um, the age, AI agents sitting on top of this. Because not every single person, let's say, that makes a Marvel movie needs to be a human being. One person that writes a story might be the LLM, the guy that's still doing the graphic design and the, the branding stuff might still be a human, okay? But how do you split up that, that supply chain? You're gonna need IP marketplaces, the composability, that happens needs to happen on chain. And just real quick, lastly, uh, identity and just a content framework, okay? Like, you can't just say, you, what do you, got? you got names for your agents? Uh, you need to have like a social profile. You need to have something that prominence for these agents and be able to trade them because they're not gonna be just incredibly fungible. Like, we all use SaaS products. It's the same thing all over for every single person in this room. But when you start to get agents, you're gonna craft the prompts and the way I design mine is gonna be totally, totally unique. And that's where the NFT part comes in where like mine might be better than yours and you're going to pay a premium for that. Um, and in, in order to do that, it needs to have identity and be able to post and all that. So this is a super exciting area. We've got a couple panels coming up detailing into this. Um, and I'm super, super excited for the next year. Thank you.